coming to the next topic is the biogas production in the last class we discussed about uh, sea waste treatment right before to that one we discussed about uh, different types of products uh, production by the microbes uh, actually the chapter is here uh, microbes and human welfare so in that case we discussed about uh, alcohol production right uh, curd formation antibiotics production and some of the chemicals and uh, enzymes production also we discussed right after that we discussed about uh, <laughs> sea waste treatment right see the sea waste treatment uh, basic concept is uh, reduce the organic matter within the domestic waste water or the industrial waste water or sea waste water right so if we reduce the organic content within that waste water <coughs> or uh, sea waste water then there is no chance for the growth of microbes there is no chance for the growth of microbes see organic content is less there is no chance for the growth of microbes microbes are not grown then the number of pathogens are reduced see the microbes means some are pathogens are there and uh, these pathogens especially causes the diseases so if we reduce the organic content within the sea waste water we can reduce the growth of uh, pathogenic microbes then if the pathogenic microorganisms are reduced okay the disease causing probability also reduced the disease causing probability also reduced so the concept is whatever that sea waste water is there uh, within that sea waste water organic content is reduced organic content is reduced once the organic content is reduced the water is called clarified water the clarified water released into rivers and oceans right that is about the uh, sea waste water treatment and coming to the next concept is the biogas production generally we know about the normal uh, gas means we know about the gas cylinders okay within that uh, there is an n butane gas is there that gas is naturally collected from the under the earth some of the raw sources are there okay from that uh, petroleum is collected uh, and uh, some of the oils are collected and uh, this gas also n butane gas also collected and that is filled in the cylinders then uh, these are available within the within our house right Th that is about that uh, and butane gas and gas cylinders but this is quite different one this is called biogas why this is called biogas because some of the microbes involved in the production of the gas that gas is supporting for the lightning that gas is supporting for the lightning especially for cooking especially for the cooking so this is about that biogas that biogas involved in the cooking process not only really this gas uh, regular gas also using for the cooking okay here this is the biogas the biogas is produced by the microbes the microbes we know we are already discussed in the first year there is a methanococcus and the methanobacillus bacteria are there that methanococcus and methanobacillus bacteria involve in the production of the gas okay that gas is collected right that one is using for the lightning and the cooking purpose right see <coughs> gases and products produced by the microbes gases and products produced by the microbes see we know about some of the ruminant animals are there uh, okay which are uh, involved in the ruminification process that is nothing but uh, cows and buffaloes are there uh, when the grass is available uh, that time immediately okay engulf that uh, grass material after some time that food again uh, comes to the mouth part and uh, the mastication process will be takes place that during that uh, okay mastication process the food is mixed with the saliva the food is mixed with the saliva okay within that saliva some of the microbes are there uh, okay these are nothing but methanococcus and uh, methanobacillus bacteria which are related to that archaea bacteria which are grown in uh, complete uh, marsh conditions means within uh, gaseous conditions these are the archaea bacteria all archaea bacteria are grown in unfavorable conditions some are grown at high temperature some are grown in salt water some are grown in uh, extreme gaseous conditions so the methanococcus and methanobacillus are related to the third type right 
So that is about the concept and these bacteria especially act on the cellulose content, whatever that grass eaten by the uh, buffaloes or ruminant animals, okay, that uh, grass contains that cellulose, that cellulose is digested by the microorganisms, that microbes especially involved in the okay, production of end products, right? See that end products, especially presence of cellulose, produces the methane gas, produces the methane gas. So uh, if the question is given uh, within the uh, biogas production, which gas is main component within the biogas? The answer is methane. The answer is the methane. See, that is about that uh, biogas production. And see, regular fermentation is also there. This is a regular fermentation process. We know that dough fermentation process and the cheese making process and there is in different types of uh, products, alcohol production and different productions are there, <coughs> right? Within the productions, the okay, rich content gas is the carbon dioxide. On regular fermentation process, the high percentage gas is the carbon dioxide. But uh, within that uh, biogas, there is an anaerobic bacteria act on the cellulose, act on the cellulose, produce the methane. Methane is the richest percentage, methane is the richest percentage gas and there is a carbon dioxide is there and hydrogen gas is there and HDS, so very very little percentage of HDS is there, right? Actually this one is not given by the NCRT, uh, HDS is out of uh, NCRT but this one is also produced within that biogas production and anaerobic sludge formation. See, we discussed in the CVS treatment process, okay? There is an uh, active sludge, okay, the secondary treatment is there, within that secondary treatment, there is an active sludge formation is there. So that is nothing but, uh, see, sludge, the sludge is also using for the biogas production. The sludge is also using for the biogas production. Okay, that case also we discussed about that biogas production, but not the detailed explanation. This is the detailed explanation regarding to that biogas production. And uh, we, we already discussed, there is a ruminant animal's gut, ruminant animal's gut, having some of the microbes, these are supporting for the digestion of cellulose, these are supporting for the digestion of cellulose, that cellulose content is broken down by these microbes, produces the gases, methane, carbon dioxide, H2, yeah, hydrogen gas and H2S, right? That is about that uh, <coughs> microbe soul. Okay, this is about the gobar gas. This is also called gobar gas. This is called biogas or gobar gas, right? And uh, sir, how the production is takes place, right? <coughs> this is one of that uh, biogas plant. This is one of the biogas plant. There is an inlet is there. This is an inlet. And this is outlet. There is an inlet is there. There is an outlet is there, right? And there is a main tank is there, the main tank is called as digester. The main tank is called as digester. See, there is an inlet is there, okay, this is the inlet. Whatever that uh, buffaloes and cows producing dung is there, the dung is mixed with the water, that is called slurry, okay, that is called slurry. So, dung water or dung slurry, okay, uh, initially poured into that uh, inlet content, right, uh, that... Uh, dung water enter into the digester. This is the main tank. Remember, this is a very important bit, uh, the measurement of uh, the main tank, biogas main tank. Or uh, the feet, how many number of feet uh, the biogas plant main tank, 10 to 15 feet. Okay, 10 to 15 feet. This is a very important bit, right? So this is the digester, especially within this digester. Okay, the slur or dung water is collected. So, here the dung water upper layer, especially, okay, one of that layer-like structure will be formed. Layer-like structure will be formed. See, the layer-like structure is nothing but uh, within the dung water, whatever that lightweight components are there, all these are float on the surface and which forms that layer-like structure, which forms the layer-like structure. So, within this digester, uh, the microbes are there, the microbes involved in that gas production. The gas is collected by the one of the gas holder. The gas is collected by the one of the gas holder. So we see the digester. After the digestion process, the gas is collected. Okay, especially the gas. 
components methane carbon dioxide hydrogen and h2s right this is called as gas holder this is called as gas holder right and the gas holder collects that gas that is connected to that uh, many number of pipes the pipes are also connected with that uh, our house within the kitchen the gas pipes are connected then uh, we can use lightning purpose and we can use for the cooking process right so that is about that uh, the digester role for the digestion process and there is an uh, outlet is there whatever that uh, waste content is there after the production of gas remaining waste content is collected that is called sludge the waste content is called as sludge the sludge is especially used as bio fertilizer the sludge is used as bio fertilizer right so that is about the inlet and the outlet this is the sludge making process right here the sludge means here after the gas production remaining waste this is used as the fertilizer especially bio fertilizer or the fertilizer right see that is about the yeah gas production and the gas is collected right the gas is collected and we are using this is the biogas plant this is the biogas plant sir so, the biogas program or the biogas production is supported by okay how the program is developed how the program is developed especially two programs are there indian agriculture research institute this is the uh, supportive okay support program for the biogas production especially in the rural area like khadi and the villages khadi and the villages industry commissions industries commission see these two programs also important one is iari other one uh, kvic these two programs are supported for the biogas production these two programs are supported for the biogas production right so that is about that biogas production and uh, this this is about the composition of the biogas and uh, this is one of the biogas plant right so this is the biogas production remember naturally human beings also produces the gas okay mostly we know some people produces the gas that is not the biogas sir why 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 that one is not the biogas because when we eat the food content we are not digesting the cellulose there is some of the carbon dioxide and other gases are produced by the human beings i uh, don't think uh, humans producing gas is the biogas especially uh, cellulose content is the main content here okay the cellulose content is digested by that uh, methanococcus and the methanobacillus bacteria so in that case only methane production is takes place that's the reason why that gas is the biogas right so that is the basic difference between uh, remaining animals gas and the biogas right that is about the biogas production and next one is uh, we'll discuss about uh, the next topic Yeah, coming to the next topic is the bio pesticides see this is also a role of microbes in human life because we know about the pesticides normal chemical pesticides if we use the chemical pesticides there is an ecological imbalance will be takes place means uh, there is in wanted organisms are there and uh, unwanted organisms are there means uh, some of the microbes have the capacity to cause the disease and some of the useful organisms also there when we use the chemical agents means chemical pesticides so both the organisms are killed means useful and uh, harmful both agents are both organisms are killed sir uh, useful agents uh, useful agents means what especially some of the microbes okay some of the not microbes some of the agents which are involved in the pollination process okay other than uh, abiotic factors we know there is in uh, abiotic agents are there water is there wind is there right which are also supporting for the pollination and uh, there is in uh, biological factors also there <coughs> biotic factors also there right the biotic factors also supporting for the pollination we studied about uh, Uh, different types of pollinations in the first year myrmecophily right chiropterophily right uh, ophiophily different types of uh, pollinating agents are there so when we use the chemical pesticides the useful and harmful agents both the agents are killed to avoid that problem we are using some of the specific uh, okay specific microorganisms here we are using some of the microorganisms 
which kills which kills whatever that harmful microbes are there the harmful microbes are killed mostly the harmful microbes are killed so uh, we are uh, we are protecting the other species one way we are protecting the other species one way we are increasing the crop yield we are increasing the crop yield and the one more important topic is when we use the chemical agents means chemical pesticides or uh, chemical uh, uh, fertilizers okay uh, these are incorporated into the food chain okay i already said that the process is called as biomagnification process within the food chain the chemical pesticides or chemical fertilizers are incorporated and reduces the life span of the organisms reduces the life span of the organisms that's the reason why year by year okay the human life span is reducing okay within the olden days there is no chemical fertilizers there is no chemical pesticides that's the reason why olden days people having the more life span than as right now we are using different types of uh, chemical pesticides and the uh, chemical fertilizers which are entered to that the uh, food grains okay right and uh, when we eat that grains then our cells life span is reduced finally our life span is reduced right that is the basic concept not only that one ecological imbalance i said one of the important word when we use these uh, agents the pollution there is a water pollution will be takes place air pollution will be takes place soil pollution will be takes place ecological imbalance right because of these pesticides or organic components okay whatever the organisms which are grown in water the organisms will be die by the effect of the chemical pesticides okay within the soil okay most some of the useful organisms also grow for suppose if we spray one of that uh, pesticide chemical pesticide okay within that soil there is no chance for the growth of uh, earthworms and other uh, uh, important uh, uh, organisms earthworms are very very useful to the farmers earthworms are very very useful to the farmers because which are mainly involved in the soil fertilization process so if we kill that uh, earthworms definitely there is no soil fertilization the yield is reduced finally one fine day the total soil whatever that a particular field is there the field is not suitable for the cultivation because completely that soil loses the okay all the nutrients and all the minerals right finally there is no chance for the growth of uh, any other plants right so uh, ecological balance also very important uh, ecological balance also maintained by the biopesticides <coughs> these are the examples lady bird especially the lady bird having that uh, red and black strips red and black strips upon that lady bird organism there is a red and black strips present and dragon flies also okay dragon flies both these are that uh, one of the a okay these are the agents which are involved in the killing of aphids aphids are very small organisms which uh, sucks the juices from the plants which sucks the juices from the plants and the other one is that mosquitoes these are male mosquitoes these are male mosquitoes not female remember these are the male mosquitoes the male mosquitoes also sucks the plant sap especially what are the cells cells contain the sap in there the sap content is uh, uh, taken by that mosquitoes aphids uh, and these are the organisms whatever that strong mouth parts are there the mouth parts are incorporated up to the phloem part up to the phloem part and absorbs that uh, phloem contain nutrients absorbs the phloem contain nutrients right so that is about that aphids and the mosquitoes killing process right uh, okay the killing is here done by that ladybird and the dragon flies and uh, one of the important concept we already know bacillus thuringiensis this is one of the bacteria it's a gram positive okay bacillus thuringiensis is a gram positive bacteria it's a gram positive bacteria that bacteria produces one of the proteins these are called crystal proteins these are also called cry proteins these are also called cry proteins right and these cry proteins especially okay initially inactive state initially these are inactive state once these are enter into the insect okay insect gut part insect gut part within that gut region there is an alkaline ph is maintained in that gut region alkaline ph is maintained 
once the alkyl pH is maintained, okay, the inactive toxic compound, these are initially inactive, okay, once these are entered to the alkaline pH, these are activated, these are activated. Whatever the gut region cells are there, the gut region cells contain channels are blocked, channels are blocked. Finally, the insect will be dead. Finally, the insect will be dead, right? Here, insect will be dead. The insect will be dying, right? That is about that uh, gram positive bacteria chitin proteins, okay, which produced by that Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria, right? And uh, this is a gram, yeah, Bacillus thuringiensis is the gram positive bacteria which produces that chitin proteins. These are also called spores, right? Yeah, these are act on insect gut cells, okay, which are active in only alkaline pH, and uh, the insects will be dying, right? See, we know about uh, there is a Bt cotton plant is there, Bt cotton plant is there, right, and the Bt brinjal, right, Bt brinjal is there, right. So these are the plants, uh, best examples for the uh, biopesticides. See, if we insert uh, the toxic producing gene into the other plants, we are already discussed in the last chapter, right. So the Bt cotton plant and the Bt brinjal plant, these are the genetically modified plant which naturally produces that uh, the proteins, cry proteins and the cry proteins when that plant pods are eaten by the butterflies or the caterpillars, okay, the butterflies or the caterpillars will be dead. That is about that bacillus thuringiensis. And see the next one is the trichoderma and all of you remember the trichoderma, this is the one of the fungi. This is another fungi and uh, this one is related to the deuteromycetes. We know the types of the fungi is phycomycetes is there, ascomycetes is there, bestiomycetes is there, deuteromycetes is there, right? This is the one of the fungi, okay, deuteromycetes. The trichoderma is related to the deuteromycetes. The main characteristic feature of the deuteromycetes, sexual reproduction is absent, right? So the deuteromycetes, the deuteromycetes, especially present in the Okay, root zone, whatever that rhizosphere zone is there, means whatever the higher plants are there, the higher plants roots are okay spreaded up to certain region, right? So this is the root ecosystem. The particular region is called as rhizosphere region or root ecosystem region. The trichoderma is okay present within that region. Is there any root pathogens are present within the soil, is there any root pathogens are there or is there any pathogens are try to attack on the root parts, these pathogenic organisms are killed by the trichoderma fungi, the trichoderma fungi, right? Then finally, the plants are protected. See, when we use the chemical pesticides and the chemical fertilizers, okay, see, that is the ecological imbalance, ecological imbalance. When we use the biopesticide, this is eco-friendly, this is eco-friendly, pollution, no pollution here, there is no chance for the pollution. And remember, the lifespan of uh, majority of the organisms are enhanced, the lifespan of majority of organisms are enhanced, right? So that is about the biopesticides and uh, this is about the concept of uh, biopesticides. Right. And some of the examples also there we will discuss now. Right. Yeah, this is one of the biological agents to control uh, different types of uh, disease causing agents. Right. See, we know the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis, and uh, we discussed about the fungi. Right. See, we discussed about uh, some of the insects like ladybug. And these are the agents which are involved. Uh, which are used as biopesticides and uh, here viruses also, some of the viruses, some of the viruses also used as biopesticide agents. See, especially the baculovirus, the genus is here, nucleopolyhedrovirus. Here baculovirus, this is the major class, right, nucleopolyhedrovirus, this is the genus, right, and uh, this is the virus species, very, 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 very specific uh, for their action means uh, which are uh, very <laughs> narrow spectrum, which are very narrow spectrum means which kills very, very specific species only, which kills very, very specific species only. Just now we discussed uh, before to this concept, uh, if we use the chemical pesticides, all useful and harmful agents are killed. Right? Here, 
if we use uh, this kind of viruses which are only act on target species and target species only killed right whatever that remaining plants and remaining mammals and remaining other useful insects which are not killed which are not affected means which not shows any negative effect on other species right see here we are discussing about the virus baculovirus the genus here the nucleopolyhedrovirus at space species specific this is specifically act and this is a narrow spectrum means very very targetly act on the specific species only that's the reason why this one is called as narrow, narrow spectrum this is not broad spectrum this is the narrow spectrum and kills the insects and the, some of the arthropods kills the insects and the some of the arthropods and remember i already said which not shows any negative effects on humans plants and mammals and remaining other useful insects also right and some of the insects are conserved by okay uh, there is a management uh, process or programs are there this one is called as integrated pest management ipm integrated pest management program Okay, this is the program is very very useful to conserve the specific useful insects means some of the useful insects are there okay that insect species are conserved by the program name of the program is integrated pest management program integrated pest management program right there is a book that bio pesticides and conservation of uh, some of the useful insects right next one we discuss about the bio fertilizers Thank you.